What up nerds? This video is going to be covering scene communication inside of Godot. It's, it's a fairly common question for beginners, so let's go ahead and get started. What I have here is a pretty standard setup for a level scene. I have my world node as my root node, and then I have an instanced player scene as well as an instanced enemy scene. Now, the player scene and the enemy scene, they're both just a single node, the node being a sprite, and they both have a script attached. Now, a common problem that beginners face is how can I get, say, a variable inside of a scene that is somewhere else on the scene tree? So, say the enemy has, it, it needs a way to reference the player. Now, a common approach that beginners will do is they'll just have var player equals get node player and then it doesn't work and the, the reason this doesn't work is because the way get node works is it walks the scene tree uh, based on the node that it gets called from so in this case the script is on the enemy node so when I call get node, it is going to search all of its children, its direct children, for a node called player, and it won't find it. So what they end up doing is Googling around and asking around, and they find out that you can just go up one level and then search from there. So what this is doing is it is accessing the parent. So it's going to the parent. That's what the dot dot. Uh, means and then it's going to search from the parent to the player because it's searching for the player node so again this is going up to the node's parent and then it's going to search for a node called player then they'll find it here and it'll work and then they'll move on now the issue with this is node paths can be fairly brittle so it might not always work. Um, so let's say you have a fairly large scene tree, which isn't uncommon because you know this is going to be like your level. So you can you'll have various like props and environment things and so on and so forth. And then you also want to kind of edit your scene tree. So let's make a container. And then you have enemies in here, and you have uh, you, you added the enemies, and now your game doesn't work anymore because remember what this is doing is it's going from this node, so this enemy node or this enemy two node or this enemy three node, going up one level, so it's getting the parent, which in this case would be enemies, and then it's going to search for the player. Well, now we have a problem. So what we can do, and this is a pretty uh, standard way to solve it, as well as you know, you will see other games in the wild using containers to kind of prettyfy their scene tree, and that's perfectly ac acceptable. So what what we can do is in the common parent. So the world node would be the common parent. We can go ahead and go in there and just give it a direct reference so uh, the dollar sign is this shorthand for get node then we're going to get the enemy node right then we're going to access the target variable and assign a reference to the player and the world node is responsible for this so the common parent node is responsible for doing this and if we look at the enemy script here we have that target node and then as long as it doesn't equal null, we're going to print out the move speed variable. So if we go to the player, we have this move speed. So let's go ahead and run it, and it works. Now, this can get uh, kind of troublesome as well. Uh, you know, if we if we move the enemy, then we have to update this node path. Um, but it's not as bad because we only have one place to up update the node path, and the parent is the one who is responsible for for managing its children. Now, 
something we can do to sort of solve this specific scenario um, is we can add the enemy to a group. So we can go into the enemy scene, go to groups, and add it to a group called enemy. And then we can interact with that group directly. And all a group is is sort of like a tagging system. A node can have uh, uh, any number of groups on itself. And what we'll do here, we'll remember we're currently in the world script. So we'll call get tree. The scene tree manages the groups. And then we'll call a method called call group. And the first argument is the group name. The second argument is the method name. So we're going to call set target because if we look at the enemy script, we have the method right here, which is the setter to this variable right here. So anytime this variable is accessed from outside of the this uh, node's instance, uh, this setter method will be called. Now this functionality will be changing in 4.0. It's going to be every time this is set, uh, is at this uh, variable is accessed, the setter method will be called. But currently in 3.x, if you access this variable, like say right here, uh, if you access it inside of its own instance, this setter method will not be called. So you would have to call this method directly or call or do something like self.target. Just a quick note. Um, but because a the, the, the world is accessing the target right here, it is calling that method. So what the setter method does is it just sets the uh, target to whatever gets passed in. Now, what we can do here, because it is expecting a value, we just pass in that reference. Because this method, the first method is going to be the group name, then it's going to be the method name, and then anything after that is going to be the arguments for the method. So what we, we can go back here, run here, and it works as expected. Now, this will work. Uh, if you want to have a bunch of different enemies, it's a quick way to set them all. Uh, if you have enemies that are all sprawled throughout your scene tree, let's say you have uh, guards, and then let's say you have uh, fighters, it, it doesn't matter. You have enemies un under, under these two container nodes, then... It, it'll still work because we're relying on the actual group naming. Now, this this strategy of pretty much relying on get node is a part of a guideline that says, you know, you in Godot, you want to get node down the scene tree, and you want to signal up. You'll commonly hear it called get node down signal up. So pretty much when the, the parent node manages its uh, children's uh, node references. Well, I, I probably shouldn't really say node references directly, but the, they are responsible for their own state. Like the this player scene, this player node right here, if I had other nodes here, let's just say another node 2D, this node right here is responsible for its scene state. Okay, now uh, it's much easier, as stated before, it's much easier for you to manage the node paths in a single area of the scene, uh, of, of your like scene trees. Now that covers the get node down. Remember, parents get node down. Children should hardly ever get nodes going up. So... Now let's talk about the signal up portion. What signal up means is uh, if you need to communicate something up the tree, say like the player needs to communicate something to the world, what you want to use is a signal. So right here in the player script, I have a custom signal. And then when I press this action, I'll emit it. So what I can do is 
uh, let's just say in our game we want to have the enemy do something like maybe maybe this it's like a door let's let's say we have like a door that's waiting on some kind of event from the player so what i'm going to go ahead and do here is copy this and then in the common parent because the world is the common parent for the player and the enemy um and in our little scenario it's the player and the door then we're going to connect that signal to the enemy and remember in our case in our little make-believe scenario it's the the door and then we're just going to pass in the method to call so the first argument is the signal the second argument is the object that has the method that we want to call and then the third uh, argument is going to be the actual method name so I'm going to go ahead and save that and then when I press the uh, right key it's going to print out something so we are connected and that's pretty much all it means for git node down and signal up now this is just a guideline and it will help you develop uh, a bit more structured uh, scene architecture it is by no means the only way to do it it is simply a guideline uh, and much like all other guidelines you will eventually learn when it makes sense to break this rule remember it is a guideline not a hard truth if you have any questions please let me know and have a wonderful day